So the fish we're going to be looking at today is the Congo Tetra, which is the Phenicogrammus interruptus. Yes, it's called the Phenicogrammus interruptus. That's the Latin name. If you are going to keep fish at an advanced level, one of the things you want to do is learn their scientific names. You don't have to remember them by heart, but learn what they are and also their pronunciation and stuff. So it is helpful to have a conversation with a scientist about a specific type of fish that you are interested in. Not me, you can just call me and say, yeah, I'm talking about Congo Tetris and I know exactly what you're talking about. But if you do want to talk to a scientific person, it's good to know. These fish are called a Phenicogrammus interruptus. I don't know why, okay? You don't ask me. So some of the offspring in here do carry this giant gene. Uh, I will, oh my God, poke my hand. This, this, this teeth are like really sharp. I will do some close-ups. Here, you guys can probably see that now. There, see how sharp the teeth are? And uh, yeah. Produced by Molly. I'm trying something new with my hair. I don't know if you guys like it. Uh, it's like a new Wolverine thing I'm trying out. Since I do have the ability to, I want to try some new looks for uh, my other job, my day job. And uh, so yeah, I'm trying out a new look. I don't know, comment and let me know what you guys think. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at one of the coolest fish I have in this fish room, which is my Congo Tetra. These guys are quite old. I've had these this colony for about five plus years now. So some of the older fish in this tank, as well as the fish that died, is quite old. Uh, I'll show some footage of him. Uh, he passed away last night, so that's what kind of prompted me to make the video. Plus, they look really nice in this tank. I just moved these males in here, so you guys can see them up here. I'll put some close-ups of them swimming about and uh, feeding and stuff. These are large fish. Some of these fish are about four inches or a little bit longer. Uh, there's not one fish that's in here below three and a half inches and uh, they're all males and I have females in the bottom tank that are three and a half to four inches long as well. I'll show you guys some of those throughout the video so you can see them and uh, so let's get into the video and uh, talk about this really cool fish that is a tetra that comes from the Congo Basin in Africa. So that's a really cool fact on its own and uh, we'll be looking at that throughout the video and uh, their care and maintenance and uh, how to keep these guys alive long term and they do make a great dither fish for your playco tanks as long as you position your filters and power heads in the right manner so we'll be looking at that in briefly as well but they are not a fish that can live in the current long term so these guys are only in here temporarily they are getting conditioned to breed so we'll be looking at that and if you guys want me to make a separate video on how to breed these particular fish comment and let me know and I will breed them for you guys and make an entire video about breeding and raising fry as well now without further ado let's look at this really cool fish so the species of fish we're looking at today is the Congo Tetra they come from the Congo Basin most of the fish available for Aquarius in the hobby like through pet stores or wholesalers or whatever are going to be tank bred animals there is a small amount of fish that are probably being collected but very rarely because the congo basin is not politically the most stable ge area geographically so because of the political unrest a lot of the fish you are going to find is going to be tank bred fish which is going to be in your favor okay now as a hobbyist you want to know how big these guys are going to get and uh, the textbooks say which is seriously fish online says that they get to about 3.2 inches for a male let me double check that so i don't misrepresent uh, these guys yes it says 3.2 inches for males and 2.4 inches for females and that is the total uh that is the standard length not the total length of the fish now the total length of the fish and the standard length of the fish i have a dead fish here that died about 24 hours ago i'm actually preserving it this guy is about four and three quarters inch from here to here okay and he is about three and three quarters inch from here to here okay so this is this would from the base of the tail to the mouth would be your standard length so if you're talking science that's standard length 
and the total length would be for commercial purposes which is from the, the mouth the front of the mouth till the base of the to the end of the tail which would be your total length of the fish now that would be what uh, commercial uh, wholesalers or retailers would define as length and a scientist would usually only define up to here excluding the tail which is the standard length just want to add that there so you guys know for this particular specimen which is a relatively large specimen this is quite rare for this size and he's still a little juicy uh, and uh, he is about 3.9 inches or, or 3.75 inches so three and three quarters inch uh, from here to here I'll put some measurements for you guys throughout here and uh, he is about four and three quarters inch or a little bigger from here to here he did have a little bit more of a longer trailer but I think it did get eaten by some of the fish and snails in here before I pulled him out so the trailers were like at actually about here which would push him over five inches okay this was a quite large fish and this fish was donated to me by Isaiah who is one of my friends who actually has a quite large collection of fish himself and works for a fish wholesaler here in Canada now he's quite old this fish and uh, we would expect his age to be between five and eight years and uh, I would say closer to the eight year mark and uh, a lot of these fish are over five years and uh, this is another fish that passed away a few months past uh, he has shrunken a little bit but for the purpose of giving you an idea of what size this fish would be in general in an average fish tank or the average size of the fish this is what you can expect he's about three and a half inches from the front of there to there I mean he's shrunken a little bit and his tails has broken off a little bit through the drying process which is how I like to preserve fish these are for museum collection and for a purpose of these type of videos and stuff like that because when I dry fish I can handle them more easily and uh, it preserves the natural look of the fish a lot better than putting them in formaldehyde which usually turns the fish into a pale white color which takes away the entire color spectrum of the fish and how the fish looks so I like this method of preservation which actually degrades some of the genetic material but it does preserve the fish in quite spectacular detail for observational purposes so it, it works for my purpose and for our museum collection and uh, to have them on display and stuff if they need uh, a specimen okay and uh, it does still smell quite a bit uh, oh my god I, I don't know why I did that uh, it does smell like dried fish I mean people eat that stuff I also eat dried fish but salted I'm not gonna eat this one uh, but yes my, my dog would definitely find it quite appetizing so this is the average size of the fish and uh, they do get a little bit larger sometimes like this guy here but this is quite rare so don't expect all your fish to get to this magnificent size of a piece here, okay I will put some footage of this guy swimming about in the tank I filmed a few days ago as well as other footage of this fish so you guys can see them in detail now as for temperature I'm going to give you guys the data that's on the books as well as what I've experienced keeping them at and that is between 72 73 degrees Fahrenheit on the low end which is about 23 degrees Celsius on the high uh, on the low end for my European viewers and Asian viewers and also on the high end about 81 82 degrees Fahrenheit which is about 27 degrees Celsius you can go a little bit higher uh, on the high end for a few days and I'm pretty sure you can go down to a 22 and a half or 22 degrees Celsius on the low end for a day or two but I would not keep the fish at those high extremes or the low extremes long term so for success you want to keep them between 73 degrees Fahrenheit which is about 23 degrees Celsius and about 81 degrees Fahrenheit which is about 27 degrees Celsius, uh, Celsius okay for breeding they do like it a little warmer these guys are at about 81 degrees Fahrenheit the females are at about 78 degrees Fahrenheit I keep the males a little warmer for conditioning for about two weeks so they get all fired up like you can see right now I'll put some footage of them eating and stuff it's quite spectacular I really enjoy these fish this is one of my most favorite fish and I don't show these guys off too often because they are in a breeding tank or conditioning tank or just just chilling out some most of the time at 75 degrees Fahrenheit just taking a break for five six months I like to give my fish a break 
so that they live a long life and uh, that's one of the reasons I think my fish live such a long time and they get too spectacular size but this guy was this big when he was donated to me so like I did not grow this fish okay he's a large specimen now um, having said that you want to keep them so for every day temperature I would say between 75 and 78 degrees Fahrenheit which would be about 24 25 degrees Celsius to about 26 to 27 I wouldn't say 27 26 degrees Celsius uh, and uh, you can keep them there indefinitely and uh, just monitor the feeding and stuff as the temperature gets higher they can consume more calories as the temperature gets lower they can con they will consume less calories and uh, so you have to feed a little less you have to feed also less nutritious food at when it's a little colder you can't feed power food like ego aquaristic and stuff when it's when the fish are at 75 degrees fahrenheit which is about 24 degrees celsius you don't want to feed any power food like discus food for example but i do feed these guys a variety of food and i think that's a key to their success long term and to keeping them alive long term and for long term health now my fish are about between five and eight years and uh, I would say the average expected lifespan would be between three and six years, uh, five years being the, a good long life. And uh, if they live longer than five years, you're doing something really good. If, you're, if they live less than five years, you're still doing good. They could live three and a half, four years in your care, and then you're doing great because the fish might be a year, year and a half old by the time they get to you. The fry are quite small. If you guys do want me to breed these, I will make a separate video. I do breed them uh, periodically. I do enjoy breeding them, so I can breed them for you guys. So comment and let me know. And uh, in terms of tank size and dimensions and stuff, you want to keep them in a large tank. They do get large, so four, four and a half inch males, three, three and a half inch females, large fish. So you want to have a lot of swimming space. You want to also keep your decorations to the back. You don't want to have too much ob obstacles and stuff for the fish to get stuck and hurt themselves or anything like that. You want to give them ample room to swim back and forth and stuff like that with not too much current. I mean, when I say that, this tank has a Penflax uh, powerhead filter that pushes about 175 gallons through the tank per hour. It's 175 gallon per hour pump. The tank itself is 65 US gallons, which is about 230 liters, I would say, 240 liters, somewhere there, or 250 liters, less than 250 liters. So it's not large, quite large tank, it's a you know, medium sized large tank, and uh, that's quite sufficient for a group of 25 fish. I do also keep these guys in my 33 gallon or 37 gallon tall tanks so something like this but a foot tall longer so that would be about 160 to 180 or 200 us uh, 200 liters uh, those tanks are ideal for breeding but for swimming space and stuff you want to keep them in a larger setup so like consider the fish the size of the fish and give at least 10 times the length of each fish to swim back and forth so if you have in a group, you know, you can have a tank that's 15 times the length of the fish and, and they're happy or 10 times the length of the fish. So a 4 inch fish times 10, so a 10 centimeter fish times 10, you know, like 100 centimeters. That would be a really nice length and uh, that would be a 3 feet and 4 inches, okay? So uh, hopefully that helps you guys to figure out the tank size and stuff. The water volume is obviously, you know, something that has a lot more water than less is better but it's not as important as the swimming space, so you have to consider the length and the height of the tank more than the width of the tank, if that makes any difference. Um, and if it's a wide tank like this, you can actually plant the back or something so the fish have more space to go back and forth and stuff like that. And as far as pH and stuff, the fish that we have are tank bred, so you want to keep them at you know neutral pH, 7 to 7.5 is good. You know, you can keep them slightly higher than 7.5. You can also keep them to as low as 6 and uh, maybe even a little bit lower like 5.5 pH. But anything below 5.5 pH, I would not recommend keeping these guys because they are not, you know, most of the fish are tank raised, probably bred in Europe or Asia on neutral tap water and stuff like that and raised definitely in tap water. So you don't want to try to push them to low pHs, you want to keep them in neutral. You don't want to also keep them in too basic of a tank. You can't keep these guys in an African cyclic tank for several reasons. One being 
the pH and compatibility, okay? You don't want to keep them in Africa sick attack. I mean, things can go quite wrong. Things can also work. There could be people that have short-term success. They could say, okay, you know, my fish are thriving for six months now or a year now or even a year and two months or whatever amount of time. But for long-term, for general care, you don't want to put African cichlids with them because they do have nice long trailers that do look quite appetizing and cichlids do take nibbles off of that. They also can nibble on other fish like angelfish, for example, are not good tank mates. I keep angelfish with these guys, but I would not recommend doing that. Anything with long fins, goldfish, for example. I have had my goldfish duckweed in here with these guys, and they leave him alone because they've known each other since long time. My goldfish did pass away eventually, not in this tank, but in another tank, uh, through another reason. But for the purpose of these fish, you don't want to keep anything like that. You want to keep them by themselves, ideally, as a group. So these guys, there's 25 or a little bit over that of my, that I have in my colony that I usually keep together. Or you can keep them with other fish, like I have Placos in here, like I have my Pseudohemidon Apitanos. If you haven't checked out the video, I'll put a link to it up here. So you guys can check out that video as well. Uh, so I keep those guys in here right now, um, you know. But usually I have them in a tank breeding or conditioning or just taking a break. So they work really well. And uh, for food wise, I feed them meaty foods, a variety of meaty foods, Dr. Bassaneers, discus food, Ebo Aquaristic, uh, when I want to condition them to spawn, uh, things like that. And a uh, variety is key to life, I think. Uh, I feed them different food every single day. Some tetratropical colored granule every once in a while, some uh, spirulina pellets every once in a while. Also some bug bites, quite a bit of bug bites actually. These guys really like their bug bites. I'll put some B-roll for them eating bug bites just now so you guys can see that. And uh, yeah, aside from that, there's not much. They're quite rewarding fish. They're quite easy to take care of. They're quite expensive. Uh, you know, about $10 Canadian for a small guy, one and a half inches, which is standard. Pet stores will have them for about $20 Canadian. Uh, two, one and a half to two inches. So you're expecting about ten dollars per inch of fish on average, at least in Canada. And uh, they are quite rewarding, and they grow not as fast as some of your other tetras. And uh, they are quite fun to keep. So highly recommend getting these guys as little fish for some of your tanks. Really do your research and figure out what type of fish you do have and if they are compatible. For example, some South American cichlids definitely will work for them, like you know, acaras some little bit more boisterous fish but you know grow them out together and uh, also some other types of fish might work but not too many African cichlids I would not recommend keeping them in a community aquarium with uh, a bunch of different African cichlids like especially if it's overcrowded and stuff these guys will get bullied and uh, they will get hurt by the other larger more aggressive fish so you have to pay attention to that and also make sure that they don't hurt any of your more sensitive fish so anything that can handle the aggression level and keep or keep their own and hold their own is ideal that's my final recommendation for tank mates and uh but i personally would only keep them in a species only tank or as the other fish for another fish that does not occupy the same water column so that's you know uh my advice and as always thank you so much for watching the video and uh, if you guys have any comments please comment below and uh, i would like to clarify those things for you guys and if you need any help with these particular fish or any other fish that i have feel free to send me a message or comment on this uh, video as well as any other video i will uh, get back to you guys as soon as i can as always thank you so much i'll see you on the next video god bless you all Produced by Malik.